Hey YouTube, we're officially done as the fourth week of GBL. This week was an open Great League again, which is nice, but unfortunately the Great League meta has figured itself out and it's very, very small. So now what I'm gonna do in this video is, first we're gonna go over what the Great League meta is and why. Uh, then we're gonna just quickly just put some teams together off the top of our head here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to run a quick analysis against uh, basically all Pokemon to see if there's any like you, Pokemon that can kind of deal with the meta that you're seeing right now um, and then how I would team build with those. So let's just start with what the meta currently is. So I got it on the right here. Legatong, Metachamp, A Sand Slash, I put in Gligar, both Shadow and Non-Shadow, Superior, Sableye, and Umbreon. Uh, and let's just, we'll quickly go over these Pokemon, why they are here. Lickitung, Lickitung was one of the best safe swaps in this league. It has bulk. Um, it, the main fighter you see is Metachamp, which is also have Psychic, so you do super effective with the Lick, so it's not even that bad of a matchup. But between the bulk, between the Body Slam Spam, uh, and between the Power Whip for, for water coverage and just being a normal type and your only weakness is fighting, Lickitung is just has risen right back up. It was always an amazing safe swap. It is now top because Noctowl, one of the hardest answers, is now gone. So really that's why it's rolling free. It's to be about things that um, lost all of its counters in the past three seasons. Metachamp, again, super bulky, can get to level 51. A counter user, always great. Half Psychic, so neutralizes some of those weaknesses like Dark. Um, Ice Punch for your weakness coverage. Psychic, even though it got nerfed, not even bad. People also run Dynamic Punch, which is really, really strong reason it is so strong is because um, one has always been strong because again bulk plus some of the best move sets here but also Noctowl nerfed into oblivion gone Trevenant your hardest answer one of your hardest answers nerfed into oblivion gone it's just like they just nerfed everything that was weak against and and having that ice punch um, like look Ligatong meta you beat with counter Sandslash you beat with counter Gligar you're gonna lose but ice punches will do 50% to take that out right so um, you are just, that's just many. A sand slash is your sort of like, it's an interesting one because you're going to lose, if you're running Shadow Claw, you're going to lose to Lickitung, you're going to lose to Metachamp, but it is an incredible answer for, uh, Flyers because you're half steel. So Gligar in particular, I mean, Gligar does have dig, but you're just going to significantly outpace with the ice punches and one ice punch will KO here. So ice punch, sand slash is there. Um, drill run for the steel coverage right so you're not even like i don't even have registeel and glaring stempest because those two have basically disappeared the fact that a sand slash got drill run last season or two seasons ago however long it was um dugon got drill run a bunch of things got scorching sand gligar got dig it has really really killed and then meta champs everywhere unchecked because of the owls and the and because the, the owls gone plus flyers are gone like registeel glaring stempest are basically no longer the steel of choice. The steel of choice is a sand slash because it has that ice typing, second typing, which helps you with Gligar and the grass, which is appearing. Gligar is instant meta. I love using it. It is so strong. Um, again, a flyer, which neutralizes some of its weakness with ground. Um, the wing attack was buffed a couple seasons ago. Air lace is buffed. Dig is buffed. Dig is your steel coverage. Aerial Ace as your grass and fighter coverage. Just it's a super strong Pokemon. It is on like 80% of teams that I see, and and I think rightfully so. Superior, talk about it, something that's everyone talked about already. Um, it is now the best grass in the game because Trevenant got nerfed a couple seasons ago. And then I did an analysis the other day. Okay, why not Venusaur? And it's like Superior has a little less attack, but Friendly Plants just such a hard hitting move anyways. Plus now you have this Aerial Ace buff slash better for fighters and um, it's bulkier. So that is why Superior is the go-to choice, and Superior does like decent against Ligtung, Metacham, even Gligar, weak to, I mean, weak to um, flying, you're still gonna do neutral because it's half ground, right? Sableye, uh, again, Sableye does great against everything except Ligtung here, right? Obviously beats Metacham quite easily, does very well against Ace and Slash, does decent against Gligar and Superior, like it's just very, very safe. And again, it was one of the best safe swaps it's now less safe. It was less safe with Noctowl, but okay, and that's gone again. So Sableye up the rankings. And I'm going to put Umbreon here. Umbreon is like right on the cusp, I think. Um, I think a lot of people are realizing Umbreon as a great answer to like wall lick a tongue with the licks while a sand slash with the Shadow Claws can take a bunch of moves from Gligar and Superior and beat Sableye, right? So Umbreon is um, starting to show up in. So 
Um, I think the most basic team that you can basically to say you can mix and match with all these is is like let's team build like put any of these three together <laughs> essentially right. Metacham Lick Tongue is like just the in, most insane combo because one of your main weaknesses as as Metacham is Ghost, which normal typing Lick Tongue will wall. So put those two. You can run Ace Lance just as an ABB. You can run Glargar as a flyer coverage four. Um, like Grass, which Medi will have a little not a big issue with, but like Poison Grass will have a little bit of problem there. You can run it with Superior because you don't have a fire weakness anywhere here. You can run it with uh, Sableye. It would be a little less hesitant, a little more hesitant because then you have Lick and Shadow Claw. So you can, but it's just like, eh. And then Umbreon, uh, same thing, ABB, like you're gonna, not ABB, but you're going to be double weak to fighting there, which is okay because they're both super tanky, so you can do that. So those two are core. Um, uh, Ace and Slash and Gligar, again, if they're at the point where it's just like, if Ace and Slash's main weakness is going to be it's double weak to fighting and double weak to fire. Having Gligar as a cover that can hit super effective against um, fighters and super effective against uh, fighters with the dig, like it's just such an easy combo. And then pick a third, right? So it's it's really just and then stabilize the safe swap. Again, nah, that's double shadow claw again. I'm always has again, but there's not a ton of normal with Noctowl gone now, so it's always that. And then Omrion can be a good safe swap, like. Fairies are around, but it's not a ton around in my my range right now. So that is the current state of the Great League meta. So the question is, what can we find? Um, what can we find to beat it? So this is just uh, there's a thing called Great League meta. So it doesn't have every single Pokemon, but it has sort of some of the main Pokemon. So you can just kind of just run this, and if you want to, again, it's a lot to take in. Um, but basically, if you just want to go down to the ending here, you can start looking at stuff that's like four and four, five and three. Um, if there's any six and twos, oh, too bad you can't organize based on that. But like, this should, should not be surprising, right? So let's just actually go over some of these six and twos to see like how, why they're so strong and that. So Umbreon, again, it's meta. It's on here, six, one, and one. Umbreon, uh, outside of Manicham, just losing to metachamp you're gonna wall the lick of tongue um and the ace hand slash uh, it's tough to see it not that i just gotta try and remember um it's just like your bulk so you beat superior you wall save life so umbreon that's why everyone has that's why umbreon has picked up a bit because it's just very kind of sneaky strong um one i was actually looking at let's talk about these ice pokemon because i saw ace hand slash as as good and and same with wall rain i was i was thinking about using roll wall rain and i just put out a video um a couple days ago at this point on dugong and i think that ice has a huge increase now because everyone's like i said everyone's kind of scared to use steels right registeel glare and Stunfist are kind of gone because everything now has like a ground move to beat you so they have kind of disappeared a bit which makes it a little easier well like ice in itself main weakness is gonna be fighting i'll talk about ac and because that neutralizes it with the fairy um but Shadow Wall Rain, just being able to put that extra damage that you get from the Shadow, flips a couple of these matchups. Um, I'm guessing this is a Sableye and Superior, maybe? The Grass you're still weak to? Yes, yeah, Superior and Sableye. Um, I wish there was a way you can organize by uh, wins losses instead of having to go all the way down. Um, I guess I can just do this. No. I have to do it. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it looks like just like Umbreon, you're getting out bulked here. Metacham against the loss, but you can beat Lickitung. You can beat Ace and Slash by landing Earthquake. You can beat the Grass. You can beat Sableye. Um, and what was the other meta Pokemon? Gligar. And then Gligar. Gligar's on 8% of the team, so Ice is a good thing. And then same with A Sand Slash. I'm sorry, not A Sand Slash. Um, a Nine Tails. Again, Charm is not the way to go with this. It is Powder Snow. If you land a Dazzling Gleam on Medicham, um, obviously the Steel is going to be one of your hardest issues. I'm not even over against the Tongue here. Obviously, Steel is going to be one of your hardest issues here. Um, so actually, let me go back to the Wall Rain. Yeah, you lose to Tongue, You just get a bulk there. That makes sense. Um, a Sand Slash. Sorry, A9 Tails. Why do I keep saying that? You're just going to get outbulked by Lickitung. Um, 
and the steel is obviously going to be such a bad issue. But like, if you land a D Dazzling Gleam on uh, Medicham, you're going to win there. Ice for the Flyers, do well against Sable and stuff like that. So the, I think the Ice have picked up significantly. And again, I've already speaking about one that I've already covered. I already covered Mandibuzz because it, it, if it's the same bill as sort of Umbreon, in the fact that you're going to wall Lickitung and do well against well ace and slash is a little trickier but you wall the shadow clouds but you get hit with super effective ice that's that's the trade-off here but you have the bulk um even again you lose against meta champ with the ice punches but you can still go air lace there so i already talked about mandy um as something to do that so you can check out that video uh if you want to look at what to pair it with so i think you're seeing now flyers too right i think flyers in general got to boost up because of all the steel that's gone. I'd say Altaria is still good. And again, Sky Attack got nerfed, but I would say Sky Attack, you still have that Dragon Breath damage. You're still um, got that bulk. The only thing I would worry about Altaria is you are also double weak to ice, and there is a lot of ice now hunting Gligar. So it's always a little trickier. We're talking about going counter meta, and I just said ice is good. It's a little trickier to run Altaria knowing that ice is being hunted right now. Um... Now let's go to like some five and threes and four and fours, right? Um, I love I love how you actually lose to Metachamp here. That's actually really close. It, like that's bait dependent. If they if they just go straight psychic, I think you I think you win with Azumarill. So that's probably a win there too. But I already talked to Azumarill's meta. Um, Carbink, this is also kind of tricky because you need to land Moonblast on many. So it's that's a little kind of fake. So I'm gonna ignore that for now. Dugong, I just went over it. It's I'd probably just use a sand slash instead of dugong quite honestly. Um, Lantern. It's so funny because everyone's now sleeping on Lantern. Well, maybe not because I think a, a few of people have recognized. And water, water gun's the way to go here, it looks like, right? That water gun is able to flip that Shadow Gligar match just going straight water gun. Um, and it looks like that extra water gun damage is outputting on the Sableye and Umbreon matchups. So that is why sort of at regionals, you're seeing a split between Spark and Water Gun. Um, because one of the main flyers that, like, flyers are kind of gone. The only flyer you're really seeing is Gligar, which is take super effective from Water Gun and only neutral is Spark because it's half ground. Right? So that's why you're seeing more Water Gun Lanterns. It's still good against the main meta. Again, if you go Water Gun Lantern, the main problem is, like, you're going to lose to the Katong Medi most will run a grass now superior right so it could it could get a little tough just going water gun but it's not bad i've used water gun over spark i don't love it quite honestly um uh, but water gun on paper does make more sense against the current meta uh i kind of skipped over mantine i think it just plays this, again plays the same role as the other flyers i want to check pelipper when i get there i just want to run 99 tails obstagoon obstagoon's interesting because you have a counter user that is not weak to, that can also resist ghost, right? Uh, because you're normal and dark, so that is a really, really unique typing in the fact that the normal and dark is gonna like triple resist. Triple resist ghost? Yeah, double resist on the normal and single resist on the dark. So you triple resist ghost. So huge wins against Ace and Assassin and Lickitung because you resist the ghost moves. Obviously you're gonna get lit up by Medi, even though you don't take super effective from flying because uh, you're not a fighter, you uh, will lose to Gligar, just again, your counter user. But like, looks like you beat Superior with your bulk there. It looks like you beat, I mean, Sableye can only rant, throw, return. You beat Umbreon, right? So Obstagoon could be a, a sneaky one to do. Again, it's only problematic in the fact that 80% of the teams are also running Medi, right? Which you just get absolutely lit up, double week to fighting. Uh, so you're just going to get lit up by Medi. So Obstacoon is an interesting one. Again, I think the Darks, because of the lack of fairies, um, Mandibuzz, Umbreon, Obstacoon are all kind of sneaky plays. And Pelipper 7-1, and one, that is what I thought was going to happen. Again, when, you're, when, your main, when your main steals are gone, when you're seeing an increase in grass, when you're seeing Medi roam, roam free as a fighter, when you're seeing Gligar, which is weak to water, I've got Pelipper coming on a team, and there's one on my try. Uh, you won't get it this week because I've got uh, videos already done this week, but you'll get it probably in a couple weeks. Pelipper's on one of my try hard teams, 
that I did well with because it is it's pr not unchecked and you do need to land a hurricane on like Lickitung here so keep that in mind but you can just go weather ball on Sandslash you can go definitely on Gligar um, can you do it on Superior is the question uh, gonna be tricky it's gonna say you have baiting here let me see if you can actually just go straight weather ball on because those frenzies do hurt yeah, that second frenzy will no, that's a beta bear at least. Let's say you just go straight frenzy. If we're gonna take out baiting, let's take out baiting for both. Yeah, two frenzies will take you out before you get to one one wing attack short of getting it. So right, so one wing attack just going straight weather ball flips that matchup. So Pelipper, not surprising. Again, strength from what I just said with the other flyers, but adding that water to deal with Gligar. Um and again, the Mud Boys take a huge hit here. I have not used, I've not seen Quagsire this entire season. And why would you, right? You have a Flyer and Gligar and everywhere. You still lose the Metacham Lixang matchups. You now have Grass showing up everywhere. Like, I, I've still used Swampert to a certain extent, but it has definitely taken a substantial hit this season, um, which, which is unfortunate because I love using it. So Steelix is at 6 and 2. I don't want to roll my eyes. Um,. I want to see how many of these actually win going straight Dragon Claw. So you will win going straight Dragon Claw against Lickitung. Um, you lose to Medi and A Saiyan Slash, which makes sense. Gligar with Dig. I'm guessing you have to go straight Dragon Tail here. And they go straight Drill Run. So it looks like, yeah, you are you do resist the wing attack, so that makes sense. And if you shield up the first one there. Uh, how many are they short? of another one though that's a question i'm guessing with a couple wing attack advantage you probably win that if you are gligar um superior as a grass yeah you probably win just going straight dragon claw barely like these are all like that's the second one you've won with like three hp sableye sableye says you need to land an earthquake here so let's just say you go straight breaking swipes you went just going straight breaking swipes, just just shielding out the first one. Okay, interesting. Maybe maybe this is actually quite powerful. The only problem is, and this is so one, I don't think you can win just going straight. Maybe you can, because you maybe just overpower it. You can. Here's the problem. This is why this analysis um, is a little is right, is correct in the one shield, correct not baiting most of the time here. Where's incorrect is Look how many breaking swipes we got off here on Umbreon. One, two, three, four, five. An Umbreon is not going to stay in four times lowered here and throw a foul play. Heck, even after two, I'm probably banking this energy and getting out of here. So what I would do is like take a couple breaking swipes, right? I, I'm Umbreon. Let's say I'm Umbreon. I throw like one, whatever. It, was, it lowered my attack. Right around here when they throw the second one, I'm probably banking this energy and leaving. I'm not throwing a two times two times lowered here. I'm not throwing a three times lowered here, and I'm sure as hell not throwing a four times lowered here. So the fact that you still almost beat Steelix, even though you're throwing four times lowered, it's it's unrealistic. In and this is why Sims and PvP Poke, you a love great resource. You always need to take it with a grain of salt about how it actually plays out. Because in reality, unless you're down to your last Pokemon for each of you, you would never ever play out the scenario like this you would never throw a three times lowered and a four times lowered final play you would bank that energy get out keep that keep that um health right so even about here i'm still at like 85 health hell let's say they get one more off i'm still at 65 um or 47 which is quite enough for you to land multiple moves multiple foul plays on something else and probably do take a decent amount of damage so just keep that in mind so again steelix on paper yes steelix on paper Looks like a nice answer to the meta. And maybe, you know what? Maybe I will try Steelix on a couple of my teams moving forward. Um, but just understand that how it actually plays and how it is on paper is much, much different. And again, look at this Stunfisk, two and six. Not surprising, not surprising, but like they really, it's Swamper two and six. They really, really killed. Um, and even Shadow Swamper. The Shadow Swamp Red extra bonus, you take a Lickitung into two Hydro Cannons. That's why that one's different. 
um, and Shadow Gligar, you take out in one Hydro Cannon here, which you could not do as a non-Shadow. Um, and Sableye. Eh, Sableye, this may be bait dependent. I don't know if one Hydro takes it out. If you just go straight Hydro, I don't think it actually takes it out. No, they get to a move. So that is bait dependent. I know that because I've played that matchup enough to know. Um, and now we're back down here. Vigoroth. Vigoroth is always a sneaky one because, again, it has that normal typing. So you're resisting the, the Lickitung and the a -Sand Slash. But um, it even actually says you beat the Shadow Gligar. Because I guess it probably only takes two Body Slams now to take out instead of three. Yeah, they shield one and now it takes two as opposed to the other one, which would hit take three plus the shielded one would be four. So Vigoroth is actually a pretty interesting one. Double is double on this list because doubles are not even on this list. Let's add double in because someone mentioned double as an answer and I'm, I'm starting to use it on my team that I did when I'm filming this, which is Tuesday. Um, double four and four. Okay. So same sort of thing. Um, except you don't flip any of the Gligar matchups. So it's basically a Vigoroth without flipping the Gligar matchup in your favor with that. But yeah, these sort of normal typing counter users that don't take Super Fectum from flying, like Obstagoon, Vigoroth, Double, definitely, definitely options. Um, I know that I've talked for 21 minutes, I didn't even tell you how to team build with this. Well, in terms of team building, I've already done, I've already done a Dugong team. I've already done a... Um, a Mandibuzz team. You can kind of replace Umbreon and Mandibuzz. They're a little different, but you can kind of replace them to a certain extent, so you can just sub in there. Um, I've done Lantern on a team already this season too. So there's definitely a few videos I've put out already on these teams. Um, I have an Azumarill one coming. Actually, it's probably already out because this is going out Thursday afternoon, so it's already out. Um, so I've covered a few of these. Maybe the ones I haven't covered yet, and I'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll cover them um, now that I've actually done this analysis. I'll cover them in a two weeks in two weeks time when this comes back with Great League Ultra League Master League. I'll cover A Nine Tails. I haven't done an Umbreon team, but I'll cover an Umbreon team. But again, you can use Mandibuzz and these other normal typings. Like I said, I just started using Double now, so Double or Vigoroth I can cover that on another team, um, or even an Obstagoon. Like that intrigues me a little bit. And then ice, ice normal typings, um, are yeah, are the two that I'll I'll take a look at moving forward there on a couple teams. Um, and Steelix, I'll try Steelix again, um, just given the current state of the meta. But that's it. Um, so that's that's the current meta. That's how I would go after it. Uh, but that is basically it. So league turnover tomorrow. So top teams for the new leagues tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.